right, guys, Memorial Day weekend. Going to head down to the Evansville Tropicana. I haven't been there since February, since the MSPT. Uh, hopefully get in some 1-3 no limit. See how the cash games are on a Friday night since it's been quite a while since I've been there. Work tomorrow, seven days in a row. Over the holiday weekend, come on. But stuff won't be designed itself. You know, I got to do it. I just have to run inside, do some errands, and then drive an hour and a half. And we'll be there. We're here, guys, uh, like two hours later or more. I have an unfortunate situation. I did not delete my footage from the other vlog from my phone, so I can't record very much tonight. So it'll be a little bit different vlog. I'm going to take as many pictures as I can and see what kind of story I can tell from that. Talk to you guys later. Let you know how I do. Showing up to the TROP on a Friday night is like showing up to the who's who at the TROP. The first 1-3 table I got seated to had all of the old guys who were there every single day. But they were all at that table. That's a very tough table to extract money from because they're nitty and they don't make too many mistakes. I only spent about 10-15 to 15 minutes there before I got moved to the 1-3 must straddle game. Now must straddle... It doesn't run very often yet at the Trop, but it's a big game at the Horseshoe Southern Indiana. When you win the pot, the next hand you must straddle anywhere between $5 to $25. And actually when I sat down at this table, it was like a second who's who from the Trop. It was all the little bit younger regulars, but obviously the looser ones who want to give a little more action, that's why they're playing the must straddle game. In one of the first hands, I get King Jack offsuit in the cutoff. Plus two was the straddle. I raised to $10, the button called $10, the small blind folded, the big blind called, and plus two called the additional $5. We see a king nine seven rainbow flop, which is about all you can ask for with king jack. The big blind checked, plus two checked, I let out $20, two thirds of the pot, and the button called $20. Everyone else folded. We see the two of diamond turn. Now I hear instances, I see instances of people using checks on some of the streets for pot control. At the time, I think, you know, King Jack, probably the best hand. Um, there's no real draws out there. So I'll just check it, you know, for some pot control. Is that a good play in this situation? Or should I just bet the hand I have? So I did check, and the button also checked. The river's the nine of clubs. I have a good showdown hand, probably the best hand. Instead of taking a stab at it, I just check and the button bets $25. I'm like, what do you show up with now? You know, you check the turn, no raising pre, so he doesn't have a big king. With that information, I just call off $25. And of course, he has ace nine. Since I checked the turn, he rivered the nine. I, the player would probably have called a turn bet if it wasn't too terribly big and the action would have been the same. But what are your guys' thoughts on pot control? Did I use it in the wrong situation, you know, with top pair, no draws on the board? I thought that was a good time to do that. A uh, semi-safe time, was it? And this was just a bad run out.
Now it's getting really late in the night, you know, probably midnight-ish or later, and I'm at a different table. Majority of it are more gamblers, not regular poker players that I always see there. Only one of the guys, I think, I usually see at the tournaments and everything. A couple of ladies and a couple of older gentlemen. And I have five set of spades on the button. Middle position limped, the cutoff limped. I decided to limp and see a flop with this hand. Small blind completed and the big blind checked. Pretty good flop. Eight, five, four, two spades. So I have a pair and a straight flush draw. Gut shot. Check, check, check. And the cutoff bet $10. Pretty good hand. Lots of draws and equity for me. I just call $10. I think in this situation, a lot of you guys, based on the comments, would lead towards raising your draw here. Should I have done that here? Just curious in this position. Small blind folded, the big blind folded, and middle position folded. We see a five of diamonds turn, and she leads out again $10. I just call $10. The river's the seven of clubs, giving me the boat. She bets 15 at this point. I try to figure out a raise size that would keep another five in. You know, if she has ace five, king five, something. I three times her bet. I show my five seven. I think I say I think I got lucky here because I assumed she had a five. No idea why I had that assumption, but she didn't. She showed pocket aces. That's what happens when you don't raise preflop with pocket aces and you slow play. I don't think she intentionally did that. I think that she's a player who just didn't know better based on other hands I played with her throughout the night. Like a hand here in a minute that I don't break down, but I turn a straight and she had just a pair of queens, queen on the board, queen in her hand, and called my bet and thought she won. She didn't see the straight out there. Anyway, that's where we make our money. hand of note I want to show is pretty much my last hand of the night. I have three deuce in the big blind, middle position limped, the button limped, and small blind completed. I just check. We see an ace five three two heart flop and it checks around. The turns of four of spades giving me the wheel. Small blind checked and I bet out eight dollars. You know no action on the flop I expect to take it down here. Middle position doubled my bet to sixteen dollars. One huge thing I hear from Jonathan Little and others in smaller limit games is when they two times your bet size, it's usually with a made hand or the nuts. And I'm thinking here, what could he have? You know, a wheel also, we're chopping, 2-6, unlikely, middle position. The button folded, small blind folded, and I made the call, not folding this hand. The river's a jack of spades. Since he's the aggressor, I checked. He bet $45, which was a pot size bet. I just think it's he, he could be on a heart draw. Missed his hearts. It's very unlikely he has 2-6. Just as unlikely that he has 2-3 and we're chopping. So I make the call, show my wheel, and he shows the winner, 2-6. <laughs> it was at that point when I decided that it was late enough and I needed to get home. We leave with our first winning session in a while, and we are a lot more excited than I show here in a minute when I'm super tired. <laughs> It's like 3.15 a.m. my time. Not sure if I'm going to make it to work in the morning, you know. Seven days in a row may be rough. <laughs> uh, plus 179 in five and a half hours. What a roller coaster that was. It was fun, though. It was fun. And we're home. 24 hours ago, I was getting up to go to the gym. It's been a while since I put in a 24-hour life session. It's been a great day, you know, pumping iron, nine-hour work day, a couple hours with the family, a bunch of hours of drive time between work and poker. Nice little poker session, time to hit the hay. I'd also like to thank 9to5poker for putting me on their website. Check them out. It shows all kinds of poker vlogs and other poker videos like Negrano and Doug Polk and they put a bunch of other poker information together. Check them out. This isn't a sponsor. It'd be longer if it was. Thank you guys for adding me and anyone who came to my vlogs from that site, comment below and let me know.